That right there, to me, is worth the price of this bar. Good morning, this is Cam with the Atlas Strength Shop, and today we're going to go over the Kabuki Transformer Bar. Recently, I was able to score a used Gen 1 Transformer Bar from Kabuki Strength. I've always wanted one of these ever since they first dropped, and let me just say, this bar is awesome. But, when I got home and I was trying to figure out how to use it and how to set everything up, everything that I found was for the Gen 2 and on. So today, what we're gonna do is we're going to go over how to actually change the settings on this thing, and we're going to set up some of the more popular configurations so you can see the difference and what those are gonna look like in your training. Let's get started with the video. So this is the Kabuki Strength Transformer Bar. Now I'm not gonna lie, upon first inspection when I got this thing, I honestly wasn't impressed. It was a lot less beefy than I was expecting it to be. This is a 45 pound barbell and I'm switching from using a Elite FTS SSB, or the SS Yoke Bar, which is 65 pounds, to this. When I got to the guy's house that I bought it from, I was expecting it to be as beefy or more beefy than the Elite FTS version, but it just simply isn't. That being said, those were only my first impressions. Once I got this thing home and I started playing with it, my opinion changed dramatically. It's very, very overbuilt, which is characteristic from anything from Kabuki Strength. Everything is perfectly machined, and this thing's a tank. So now let's get into how to actually change it. On the newer versions, if I'm understanding it right from their, uh, from their marketing material, to change this, it's all spring. So you push it in or pull it out, you pop something, and you're, you're, able, to, uh, you're able to switch it around when the bar's even fully loaded. That's not the case for the Gen 1. The Gen 1 did have to be empty in order for you to change the way it is loaded. But that being said, I don't understand why people would be changing it mid-set anyway. It doesn't make sense to me. Just set it up right, do your sets, move on for the day. So what's cool about this bar? What's cool about this bar is you can actually change where the center of gravity is going to be placed. And you do that two ways. This is a pivot point right here. So the, the uh, bracket that comes off this way will go 180 degrees all around the center axis. And the actual barbell sleeve, you can move between four different points along that axis. So anywhere within that circle about that big, you can center your plates and change the movement draw drastically. So how do you go ahead and change it? Well, the first thing you do is you're gonna unscrew this and put your hand out because I did learn that these will bounce across the gym and it'll take forever to find. You unscrew this, you set it somewhere where you're not gonna lose it, and then you pull this off. So, a couple things to notice. Hopefully you can see this in the camera, but right here, you have numbered between one and six with little dashes in between those numbers as well. So one, 1 1.5, two, 2 2.5, so on and so forth. And then on the bar right here, this took me forever to see because the lighting in my house is very poor. And I, it just, it was hard for me to find. What I'm gonna wind up doing is actually marking that with a white paint pen. But there's a little bitty dot that's hammered into the steel right here. That's what you line up to your actual dash. And then to switch the distance from the center point, you just twist. and then you can move this off like so. Put it back together, you slide it back in, you twist, you, pop, you find the corresponding number to where you want to set it. I'm just setting it right back where it was, and then you screw it back on. Kabuki made this handy chart, which I'm going to be putting all over this video that has the most popular configurations already on it. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna pull up that chart and I'm gonna go through each one. I'm gonna set them up just like that and I'm gonna pop 155 on this bar, so a 55 on each side. And we're gonna film from 90 degrees to the side, that way you can see 
what the bar path is going to look like and how the torso, the knee angle, and just all those different variables in your squat change based on those positions. That's going to be a far goblet squat, near goblet squat, a front squat, a back squat, and an SSB squat. There's so many variations in between those as well. I think uh, on the website it said there's 48 different variations. We are not gonna go through all 48. We're just gonna hit those main ones so you can get an idea. And uh, hopefully, hopefully you have a better idea of how something like this would fit into your training. So if you run across a good deal on one of these like I did, you can pick one up. Uh, I think new, these were like 700 bucks. I got this and a deadlift jack, uh, second one for the gym for only 40, uh, $400. So yeah, I got it for a steal. I'm not mad about it. Let's get started. Okay, so right now I have the transformer bar set at position 3A, which means that the weight is as far from the access point as possible and almost directly in front of me. In theory, this is going to mimic a kettlebell squat where you're holding that kettlebell far away. So ideally, my torso is gonna be more upright than normal and my knees are gonna be able to travel very far forward. However, I haven't bothered to do any mobility before this because I'm, I'm racing the clock before gym members get here. So let's see how it goes. So I'm gonna get under it. Now right off the bat, you'll notice I don't have to hold on to this thing because the way the weight is cambered, it's holding on to me. Like I, I feel like I'm trapped in a, uh, not trapped, but I feel like I'm in a vice right now. Now, the biggest problem I see with this and positions like it, are these handles are really long and traced down my body, so I can definitely see that these could get in the way whenever I start to do the squat. So I'm gonna have my hands a little high, hopefully mitigate that, and let's see how it goes. Okay, that didn't feel bad at all. Ah, I forgot how sore I was. I did squats like two days ago. Ultimate downs right now, but I felt very upright. It felt like the frontiest of all front squats, which is what it's going to feel like. Uh, the handles didn't really get in my way. I'll turn this way so you can see what that looks like and I'll do another. But this doesn't feel bad. I just feel really sore right now. Let's go ahead and re-wrap it. Pro tip, do these later in the day when you're actually warmed up. So now I'm going to switch it to the kettlebell near position and we'll go from there. Move the camera back just a little bit because I noticed my feet weren't in the last one, but my feet weren't really that important part of the story. They might be going for it, so who knows. So I have it set up on 2.5A now, and they say that is their near kettlebell squat position. It wasn't how I expected them to change it. I figured they'd just bring it in a little bit, but hey, let's see how it feels. So again, I feel like the weight is squeezing me, uh, just kind of like levered in between my torso and my neck. It's not as bad as the kettlebell far position though. Uh, I'm still having that same issue with the handles, so I'm gonna hold high again, and let's see how this one goes. That one actually felt better. I felt a little bit more upright. We'll see how it looks in the video. That's not bad at all. Maybe I'm just getting warm. I'm probably just getting warm. All right, next up we have the front squat configuration. We are set at 2.5C, which means I didn't change the angle of the camber at all, but I did bring it in towards the center of the bar, uh, you know, towards that center access, about four inches, a whole two clicks, uh, given that it's... All right, so now we're in the front squat configuration. That's set at 2.5C rather than 2.5A, which means we didn't change the angle of the camber at all, but we did bring that center of gravity in about four inches. It's going to make it a little bit closer to our body. This one, it's supposed to simulate a front squat. I have always been shitty at front squats because I have a long torso, short femurs, and long arms. It's just all the worst possibilities for a good front rack. So that's one of the reasons I was really excited about this bar is I could actually get a good front squat feeling in. I used it the other day, so I already know this one feels good. Let me show you all how it looks. So again, it's not as bad. This sits comfortable, similar to an SSB would, 
Uh, I don't feel like it's biting down on me the same way the two goblet squat positions felt. Again, that bar is traveling down the length of my body. I can see how it can get in the way for some people. I'm gonna keep my hands high on it, and we'll see how it goes. Feels just like a front squat, except I don't feel like when I get heavy, I'm just gonna dump the bar in front of me. So now my rack position isn't the limiter for this movement. The limiter for this movement is, again, my core and my quads. I no longer have to worry about dumping the bar in front of me. That right there, to me, is worth the price of this bar. And now we have it set on position 1D, which is as close to the center as we can, and the camber is a little bit back. This is going to be as close as you can get to a low bar back squat without doing a low bar back squat, which is great for me. Last time I did a barbell low bar back squat, I actually dislocated my elbow and was out of the game for like six months. So that was another reason I was really excited about this bar because I personally hate SSB squats. I love the feeling of a low bar squat. This is what I used for my primary squat just a couple of days ago, and that's why my legs are so sore today. It felt great, I had a blast. I'm gonna show y'all what that is going to look like. So get under this bar, and already you can tell it's not just hugging my body. I feel like if I let this bar go, it will fall off my back. I'm not about to try that. These plates are expensive, this bar is expensive. And I'm actually able to get a good low bar position. So you'll see my torso is leaned forward more, just like in a traditional low bar. And I'm not fighting that hip raise like you would be in a typical SSB where your hips kind of shoot up and your, uh, and your chest wants to follow through. This feels like a really good low bar position. I couldn't be happier with it. And last but not least, Probably can hear that over the cleaning. Last but not least, we will switch to the SSB position. So now we switch to 1A, which means we move that weight all the way as far from the center of the axis as we could. This is meant to mimic a cambered bar. But since we have these handles right here, I guess it's more like a spider bar. Which we have a camber bar, we don't have a spider bar. I've never done this movement this way. I have no idea how this is gonna turn out. So let's see how it goes. So again, just like the low bar, I feel like if I let go of these handles, it's gonna fly off my back. Let's see how the squat feels. So that was a very forward lean squat. Let's see if uh, changing the angle of the camber is going to adjust that. Like if I push up on these bars. So just like a spider bar, or an SSB, if you move these bars around, you're going to change that caber a bit. I will most likely never use that position. And last but not least, we have it set up in their caber bar position. This one should feel very familiar to me because I used the Elite FTS SS yoke bar as my primary squat for the last couple of years ever since I dislocated my elbow. We'll see if it feels the same. So first impressions, it feels exactly the same. It's actually staying on my back without me having to hold on to it. The handles are a bit longer as we've discussed, so the handles might get in the way of the squat, but we should see how it feels. <sighs> feels exactly the same as my SS yoke squat, which for me kind of feels a little bit like a high bar back squat. I know that's not the case for everybody though. So that's it for the video. If you liked it, please, please, please like and subscribe. And what I want you to do is screenshot this, share it to your Instagram stories or your TikTok. If you tag us, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna send you a promo code that's good for 10% off any of our apparel. If you're in the Baton Rouge area, please come and visit us. Best thing to do is shoot me a DM on Instagram to set something up. If you're not in the Baton Rouge area and you still wanna support us, then check out the website. We do online programming and we have a really cool apparel line. Till next time, keep that tightened.